What's up, everyone? Welcome back to the Collider Studio presented by Saratoga Springwater. I have with me the team behind the movie, 1001. Huge congratulations on your film, First Feature. Thank you. That's something special and excellent performances across the board. Congratulations. Thank you. All right, so clearly I know what your movie is about. A lot of our viewers will not know what 1001 is just yet. So would you mind doing the honors and giving a brief synopsis? Brief synopsis, 1001 is the story of a mother and son in 90s and early 2000s in New York who are, she's so sweet and thoughtful. This is the mama right here, Inez. <laughs> Um, but basically you see this mother and son duo trying to rebuild their life in a city that's rapidly changing around them. Um, and she just so happens to kidna kidnap him out of foster care to do so. So again, first feature is a very, very big deal. When you go into wanting to make your first movie, what did you at the time think was the first step to making that a reality and having gone through it, is that a first step you would recommend to some, someone else or did you find something that was more effective? What is the first step to making a feature film a reality? Yeah. Well, I mean, you gotta have the idea that you're really passionate about. Um, and I think that's like very simple, but it's also really critical because you have to climb so many mountains in order to get to where we are today. And you have to believe in it through and through, you know, during every moment that like you're questioning life <laughs> in general, like how do I get this movie done and made and out the door to share with audiences? You really have to believe in it because it's gonna ask everything of you, you know? Um, and so you have to be in it 100%. To follow up on that, and everyone can chime in on this, Making a movie is a feat. No matter how much you plan, no matter how many resources you have, there are ups and downs. Can you each pinpoint a low point in the making of this film where you thought like, maybe I won't be able to pull it off, maybe I can't do it, and then where you found that confidence to overcome that challenge and see the thing through to fruition? A.B. give the best hugs. Honestly, she really do, and she kept us protected. Um, I went during my lunch break, three different lunch breaks, I've been to three different funerals and wakes. So I was dealing with like a lot of death, uh, losing friends in Harlem, and it was just like to come back to set, like, okay, how am I gonna like pull this together and get it? And it's just like, she would see what I'm even having to tell her what was going on, and she'd give me a hug, and I cry, you know, and then we get to it, you know, and she make me use whatever it is that is in my heart and what I'm feeling, and she make me put it into the scene. So I was able to channel all my energy through Inez, you know? Seriously can't undervalue the uh, the impact of a good hug. I'm a I'm big it believer a in the way. truth in that. I'm not making light of it. Yeah. Like a, a hug, even like just without, it doesn't matter what it's about. You know, it's about like whatever it is you're going through, whether it's my business or not. You know what I'm saying? Like this is what we're going to do. That goes a long way. You know, like nothing has to be said, not a word. Yeah, because yeah, sometimes or a lot of times words just aren't enough. Yeah. All right, well, what about for you? A low point, how'd you overcome it? A low point, um, I think I emailed AV and said, uh, can we talk? <laughs> and then we went to, or she emailed me actually. Yeah, I probably emailed Yeah, she emailed me and it's like, can we talk? And uh, we went to a restaurant and I simply said, I don't know if I'm the guy you want. And um, she's like, no, you are the guy I want. That's why you're here. And I just want to tweak some things. And then on top of that, you know, I'm coming to New York. I'm, for some odd reason, because I do the audition, I'm from DC, I'm not originally from New York. And it's like, oh, you need this accent. So I'm like, oh shit, accent, AV wants to talk. Um, okay, so that was going to be a low moment for me, but then I hired a dialect coach. And then when me and AV sat down and, and, and got a chance to talk, I understood her rhythm and what she was trying to do. So there's some things that I wanted to do that I had to surrender to her vision and what she wanted to do, you know? So it was, it was a beautiful moment that became a high because when we fast forward to a scene that we do, an intimate scene that we're doing, and at this point, we're talking with our words. I'm looking and I said, let me try something. And it was something in the scene that was needed that was not there. And had we not had those moments, then that trust wouldn't have been there in that moment. So I needed that low moment for the other moment to happen. And uh, yeah, I think we got an amazing 
project on our hands. That's why I asked that. Low moments aren't bad. Yeah. It's just something to build on and make something else better. Yeah, but when you get that call from your director, that email, yeah. like, we need to sit down. I'm like, oh, dang. <laughs> also, no. the fact that you didn't think you needed, like, he thought he had a New York accent already. Like, Are you, you didn't, yeah, you didn't think that you had a DC accent. There's a I difference. Mean, no, 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 no. <laughs> I didn't even think about it until we was shooting the scene, and you was but like, even said, think, yeah, think yeah, about yeah, it. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but she was like, nah, say it like this. Say it like this. I said, oh shucks. Okay, let me call a dialect coach. Let me call my boy Eamon from, uh, he from Harlem. Let me get with G Dot. Okay, <laughs> let me get that Harlem bounce, baby. We came back to set. I was on, though. Yeah. Nah, you was. You yeah. was. I'll give you that. Yeah. AB, I'm not letting you get out of that question. I want a low point in this production. <laughs> you know, I was actually like incredibly burnt out after we, after we wrap principal photography and I, I had never experienced that like you know you have little moments but I was just like really like wow um, and so I think actually something that really meant something to me kind of similar to what you said about hugs is uh, a young lady that was a part of our crew she sent me this really like wonderful thoughtful care package and she came out of the foster system so she had no, no like idea of what the story was before she joined our crew and I think just in the process of making it and going along this this ride with us, um, she was like, "I feel like you told my story," and and that meant so much, mu so much to her because she felt so seen. So at a moment where I was kind of like, "Do I want to, do I want to finish this? Do I want to make movies?" I'm just so like, I just, I just didn't physically have it, you know, mentally have it. Um, I remembered why it was so important to get this story and to get stories like this out the world because people just want to feel seen, you know, they want to feel understood, they want to feel like other human beings that are watching their stories being told will empathize them, like they empathize with our characters. So that was just like a really visceral reminder for me for like why I make movies in the first place. I'm jumping all over the place because I do want to go back to the casting process, but your answer is reminding of something else I like to ask often because I'm a big believer that in this industry or anywhere in the world for that matter, we don't tell people good job nearly mm -hmm. enough. So was there ever a time on this set when someone behind the scenes just really crushed it at whatever their job was and you want to tell them like, good job, I appreciate your hard work? Like right now, tell them? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, um, I mean, I think everybody, this was something that I feel like it was a production that like, it was so hard to get through, like shooting in COVID, shooting a movie with a small budget, uh, shooting during severe weather, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Like, and so I think our crew, like I'm immensely grateful to them in general. Um, I think one shout out that I can think of in particular is the art team because I was, it was really important to me to feel like this was an authentic home for this type of woman in the 90s and early 2000s and that's a period that's actually not well documented in terms of like what did black people live like, you know? And so I felt like I could describe it over and over, um, just like the nuances of what I remember, but I didn't have a lot of picture references. Um, and it was actually during our, um, when we were location scouting uh, with my production designer. And I was like, there it goes. Like, you know, just certain people in their homes, they still had like, you know, the bedroom sets or like just certain types of like leather couches or whatever, you know? And so we, got our iPhones out and we got all those documents because it's just like, it's just a lived in, breathed in experience of what I felt like I needed to see when I thought of anybody that I was growing, like all the mommies and aunties that would have been living like Inez, you know, the plastic on the, on the, uh, on the lamp, you know, it's just like certain, you know, when you thought you was living large, right. <laughs> with certain French sets that, you know, aren't really around now, like it was really important to get that in the art team. I, I was really proud of the work that they did to get all of those details right. I'll throw that question your way too, both of you. Um, a time when a crew member made all the difference to you because they crushed their work and it made a tough scene easier for you. Honestly, all of the props, um, scouting, like everybody was really sweet to me. Um, and yeah, like she said, the, the whole team really, really crushed it. And it takes a village, it really do, you know? And us being in front of the lens is a very, very small part of a movie. Maybe you could say small, but important. Very, no, very, very important. important. But what I'm saying is if it's not for the village, we yeah, have yeah. no town. Oh, for sure. You know what I'm saying? Like, Hundreds, it, if not thousands yeah. of people are responsible for making a exactly. movie. Exactly. Yeah, I think what she's tapping into is that they're, even though their part is incredibly critical, they you know, movies are some of all parts and no parts, no one part is above the whole coming exactly. together. Now I'm backtracking. Going back to the casting, I had read somewhere that originally you didn't think Tiana was the obvious choice for this role, so it was making me curious. What did she do in her audition that, that changed that and made you say, yes, I have my Inez now? 
I think I just, within, you know, a short um, audition tape, I got to see the breadth of what I was looking for in terms of uh, not only what was critical in terms of uh, performance, like just the actor being able to like really give something honest to the scene, but also just like the authenticity that I was looking for and feeling like I could see through her performance that she knows this human being in real, real life or she is, you know, this human being in real life in, in the ways that, you know, I needed an actress to really connect to the material because I think like, you don't see a lot of that in Hollywood. You see, um, you don't, I think like, uh, I, I didn't want to feel like it was performative. Like, oh, let me be this urban woman, you know, this ghetto woman or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Like, I needed somebody who just like, that's my auntie or that was me at a particular age, you know, like, and, and I think Tiana had that, you know, in her innately. Um, and I felt like similar to me, like she has a lot of like New York just that she like oozes out naturally. And then she just had the chops, like, you know, just to be able to deliver those really difficult highs and lows of the movie. Um, like the joy and the pain with such like range and that levity and, and like that, you know, grit that Inez has. There is a significant amount of range to your character, and we also cover like a, an expansive amount of her life too, of everything she goes through. Is there any particular thing you were most intimidated to play? Um, I mean, life whooped Inez's ass, you know. So it was, <laughs> it was never a moment that like did not intimidate me. But I feel like. I needed to feel that, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't want anything to be easy. I don't want anything to fall in my lap, you know? Like, so it's like, I could bitch moan and holler about something, but I'm gonna get the job done. You know what I'm saying? And I needed to, I needed that fear. And fear is, fear is okay. You know what I'm saying? Nothing is wrong with fear because it puts you in survival mode. And as Inez, I had to survive. You know what I'm saying? So if I didn't have that fear, I wouldn't step into survival mode. I always feel like if you don't have fear and you don't have nerves, it's probably a sign that you don't care and yeah. you can't not care in exactly. filmmaking. Because there's no, there's no passion in things being easy. There's no passion in feeling like you know it all, you got it all down. It's like, where's the passion in that? You, you got to fight for something. And I'm all about the fight. We have no fight. We, we could just never be on the same page. All right, well, I'm coming your way. Yeah. So I feel, I feel like Inez and Terry are the main characters of the movie. You are pivotal to their journey. And then on top of that, you also have to make Lucky feel like a whole person, even though we don't get the same amount of private moments with him. So is there any backstory details that you would have come up with yourself that we might not hear about via dialogue or see on screen, but we can feel informing your performance and making him whole? I think it was just him being present. You know, when I watched the film, some of the looks he would give Terry, the looks he would give Inez, the looks when he was on the couch, um, the basketball scene, you know, all those moments, you know, gave you his backstory. I think if there was more, then it would have took away from what was right there in front of you. Um, Lucky was a joy to play, you know. Um, I have an amazing father in my life, so a lot of things I was able to um, put into lucky but there was already written like walk on it walk on this walk on this side of me my dad had told me that when i was a young man you know you walk on this side of the street so those things came so natural um i just you know hats off to av i mean it was all on the page you know sometimes you know when you do a, a lot of projects it's not on the page and actors great actors look for things that are not on the page but when it's there then that's the gift because you can just live with what's there Yep. Oh, so many collaboration questions. I'll, I'll ask the two of you about A.V. first. What is something about her as an actor's director that made all the difference for you on this set that you hope to experience with more directors in the future? You feel and protected. You know, I've been saying that all day. Like, that's we're very, very big on that because a lot of people, you know, they step behind that camera and they want what they want and then that's that, you know. But she's not going to say we got it until everything is perfect, you know? So it's like, sometimes you'll be like, oh my God, this was the take. And then you see the movie and it's like, wait, what, what, mm -hmm. what happened? Mm -hmm. You know, but it's just like, she know when she got it and she's not gonna have nobody looking crazy, you know? So it's like a trust that you have is a vulnerability that you can have with a person that makes you feel safe. You know, it's so many different levels of protection, you know, mental protection, emotional mm -hmm. protection spiritual protection, yeah. you know, and she's given us protection all across the board. And that's a big thing for me because I've been on a lot of sets where I have not felt protected. Mm -hmm. For me, um, you may see a, a five foot something human being, but that's a giant right there. 
and she's not going to back down on what she wants. And that, authentic, that authenticity reads through. And so when you have someone showing up in their life as authentic as she is, it forces you to be authentic. So she's not trying, she's not trying to prove anything. You know, even doing this, she's not trying to prove anything. This is what I thought, this is what I wanted to share. Here it is. And it's so much freedom in that and it allows you to be free. And I thank you for that. <laughs> I asked this question earlier. I love asking this question and hadn't in a while, but now I'm curious. What is what is AV's like monitor dance, so to speak? Like something she does behind the camera that signals to you like, I like this take, we're good to move on. I know one. Um I love when she bring that little paper. She got like these little, these sides and it's like, it would have all the doodling and yeah. like all these different notes. And I'm like, are you saving all of these? You know what I'm saying? But it's like, once again, it's that passion. You know what I'm saying? And it's just like, she do do this like this little smile cause she don't really like to smile much. But I know when she happy, she do this like little, like this little look. And I'd be like, yeah, I killed that shit. You know yeah. what I'm saying? It's yeah, like yeah, that yeah, little, yeah, yeah. you know, you just know when she happy, but that's what I love. Cause she's readable, you know, yeah. like, you know, and you know when it's like, okay, well, team, you just go try that one again. You know what I'm saying? Just maybe try it this way, da 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 you know? So it's like this little smirk smile thing that yeah. she does when she's happy and she got her shot. Right. I'm happy all the time for the record. <laughs> no, she's happy all the time, but what I've I'm seen saying is- I've seen a lot of smiles like today. Me, I, got, I got a little bit of rest in B face, you know, like yeah. you, People won't know that I'm like super sweet and silly until I'm like, hey, you know what I'm saying? So it's just like, she's just like, she has a great balance and just, it's also part of being like a professional. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I'm not gonna feel like I'm doing what I gotta do if she happy go lucky all the time. Like I need, we, it's time to get down to business. Cause she'll smile and be like, all right now, back to work. I love that. Like she balances like making you feel comfortable. She balanced professionalism and being family oriented. She balanced it very well. So that's what I mean. I'm not saying she's an unhappy yeah. person. I would say AB is like Coach K, you know? She'll come over to me and it'll be good. And she's like, yeah, I want you to lean more into that tomorrow. You know? Yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, okay, I got it. So she likes something, but we need to carry that over to the next, the next scene. So, um, you know, as a former basketball player, I, I, I like that, you know, it's stoic with her. You know, she ain't gonna let you know too much, but she'll let exactly. you know. Exactly, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, it's like she got this swag, yeah, like she's yeah, just yeah. real swag. And she be fly on set too. Uh -huh. She's like the flyest director mm -hmm. I've seen. I this love to true. hear it, I yeah. believe it too. Yeah. <laughs> so they're singing your praises. You've got this work down, it seems, but we learn something new on every single production. So what is a new tool in your directing toolkit, so to speak, that you know you can credit to 1001 that you're excited to apply to a future film? Um, I mean, I think I learned to be present in a new way and on a, another level, and, and I'm extremely grateful for that. And I think anybody who like, you know, spiritual meditation, that type of stuff, um, I feel like, oh, it clicked for me on another level because I had to show up in a way um, that wasn't, you know, <laughs> asked of me on prior productions. And so I'm super grateful for that and just really existing in the moment. And what do we need right now, despite whatever level of drama, chaos or uncertainty. Um, and so I'm grateful for that. And I think that like with everything that I did have to overcome and making my first feature and all the things that I learned from it, I think it made me that much more of a, a stronger filmmaker and a stronger leader. Um, and that's really important. I think leadership, the, the part of directing, directing is not just like getting what you want or what you need, but you have to be the one that is like guiding and everyone and energizing everyone. Um, and so I think just it sharpened my tools in that respect. too. I don't want to let you guys go without asking about the Terrys because the three of them are great. Tiana, I'll throw this one to you. And I don't know if you thought about it this specifically, but can you tell me something unique about your collaboration with each of those actors that maybe reflected the stage of their relationship throughout the film? Um, it's crazy because I'm a mother of two. I'm always in mommy mode. So it was like the chemistry with all three of them was amazing. And they all had like, that respect for me. So it was kind of like just a coddling situation where they just like naturally got up under me. And I thought that that's what made it really dope. Cause we, it was like mother and son with all three of them from like start to finish. They're exceptional. The whole they movie are. is exceptional. Congratulations again, Thank first feature, you. quite the accomplishment. Thank you, it's been a pleasure. A thousand and one. Congratulations to everybody out there. Stay tuned, we'll have more from Sundance 2023 for you soon.